We're big fans of the Skoda Fabia hatchback. In fact, it was our car of the year back in 2014. So this stretched version, the Fabia Estate, is already starting off on a good footing. It's a car with few rivals, the closest being the Ford Focus, Vauxhall Astra, or the Dacia Logan MCV. Still though, this Skoda needs to prove itself to be practical and spacious family transport. In this review, we'll tell you what it's like to drive, how comfortable it is, how much luggage you can put into it, and ultimately, which version you should buy. And if at the end of this review, you're swayed into buying a Skoda Fabia estate, then go to our new car deals section, where we can help save you thousands. But first of all, let's see what this little car is like on the road. There's six engines to choose from in the Fabia estate, but our favourite is the mid-range which is fitted to this car. It's a one litre, three cylinder, and it has 94 brake horsepower. It might sound like a small engine, but it has enough pulling power to get you up to speed fairly easily, even with a full boot, and it's really efficient. If you're looking for more power, there's a 109 brake horsepower version of that one litre turbocharged engine, and it's only slightly less efficient. And at the other end of the scale, there is a 74 brake horsepower non-turbocharged engine. But when you get onto roads like this, it really does lack the muscle to keep up with the other cars. If you're doing enough miles to justify a diesel, there's three versions of a 1.4 litre to choose from. We recommend the 104 brake horsepower because it has enough pulling power and is very efficient. The Fabia Estate is surprisingly good to drive with light and precise steering and nimble handling and ride quality is decent enough on all but the most uneven surfaces. While the interior is well soundproofed, regardless of whether you're driving around town or you're traveling at motorway speeds, you don't really have road noise coming in. But what does find its way in is engine noise, especially if you go for a petrol. There's plenty of room up front in the Skoda Fabia estate and enough adjustment in the seat and steering wheel so that you can get comfortable. And although the interior is not as premium a quality as the Audi A1 or Volkswagen Polo, all the switches do feel quite chunky and robust. It's just this hard scratchy plastic here which is quite unforgiving to the touch. We'd recommend going for the SE model because you get this 6.5 inch touch screen instead of the smaller 5 inch touch screen that you get on the entry level S model. The good news is that Skoda has borrowed the latest infotainment system from its sister brand Volkswagen, which means all versions from SE upwards come with the slick SmartLink Plus system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity, which lets you use your smartphone via the car's touchscreen. As a result, you can do without the optional sat-nav and use your phone system instead. This is where the Fabia Estate really comes into its own. This large bottle of water fits in the door bin very easily and it might fit in the glove box. Let's find out. It is quite a decent sized glove box and yes, the water bottle fits in there. Somewhere for a healthy snack and another healthy snack. And then I've got two cup holders down there and my phone is currently plugged into Apple CarPlay. Let's see what the back's like. Here, there is enough space to fit three adults side by side, but really you'd only want to do that for short journeys because with someone in the middle seat as well, it is going to be a bit squishy. Now, if you are traveling five up quite frequently, it's worth spending the extra to get a middle headrest because it's a small price to pay for some whiplash protection. Boot space is really impressive. You get 530 litres with the seats up and with the seats down you get a whopping 1,395 litres which is really great news if you like going to Ikea. Plus there's some really handy storage spaces, there's one here, one here, little one up here and a 12 volt power supply just in case you want to charge something in the boot or something like that. We would, however, recommend that you go for the variable boot floor because then, when you put the seats down, you don't get that really irritating step. If you're looking for a small, practical car and you're not too fussed about a premium badge, 
you can't really go wrong with the Fabia estate. And with emissions being so low, that's great news for company car drivers. And in our latest reliability survey, the Fabia shows itself to be a pretty reliable workhorse. We'd choose the 1 litre TSI 95 engine and team it with SE specification. While entry level S cars might look tempting because of their low price, they miss out on much of the equipment that would be considered normal these days. SE models though include alloy wheels, air conditioning and rear parking sensors as standard. You even get a handy umbrella underneath the front passenger seat. One thing to think about though is do you actually need the estate version because the regular Fabia hatchback is just as good to drive, costs significantly less and has more boot and passenger space than most hatchbacks. If you do decide to buy a Skoda Fabia estate, rest assured it's comfortable, incredibly spacious and very good value. In fact, it could be even better value because we might be able to save you thousands if you go to the new car buying section of whatcar.com. While you're there, check out the full online review for this car, including its rivals. But before you go anywhere, never miss another video, hit subscribe.